In this video, we are going to talk about some pretty cool camping hacks. This is my son on the beach in New Jersey making a fire, and I never knew you could make a fire on the beach. I stand corrected. It's Island Beach State Park. In this video, we are going to do some camping, RV, packing hacks. Probably like you've never seen before because we banter back and forth. Our favorite thing. So check it out. And don't mind my hair in this video. I had filmed right before I had my hair done. So it's messy in half of it. And then it's okay now. One thing that we just implemented is the milk crate because the propane tank will not flop and roll all around if it's in the milk crate. And it's perfect for that. And it probably would be perfect for any other kind of cylinder like that that could roll around. Our cabinets, when we're traveling, they do have latches but we still get these little bungee cords and we just tie them so they're shut. And that way they're not gonna come open. And they're easy enough to take off if we wanna get in there. This thing with the two C-clamps is just a piece of plywood with a couple notches for the microwave feet. It keeps the microwave from moving around when it's being transported. This looks a little rustic, but it's merely here to keep the microwave from sliding around when the trailer is being transported. Once we arrive at the site, that comes off and, and goes away. Um, the microwave, we actually lost a microwave. Gun rested so. We don't lose it, we just broke it. Yes. So we forgot to put this contraption in when we left, and I thought I heard something. And we pulled over, and then you opened the back door, and there was glass, glass shattered everywhere. All over the floor. So the microwave slid right off. So this contraption is what we use. I put a strip of wood on the floor down in front of the refrigerator, and that holds the feet so that the refrigerator can't slide out. But yet there's enough clearance that if I needed to pull the refrigerator out, I can lift it up tip it a little bit to get it to go over top of the strip on the floor and then I can remove the refrigerator if I need to. Um, I already did a video about making your own fire starters out of dryer lint. There's many different ways to make them from, uh, I use old candles that are kind of burnt down and I dig the wax out, melt all that wax together. I dip pine cones in it. That's one of my favorite ones. Um, the pine cone fire starters, and then I've got the get lit fire starters that look like something from the 70s. But I roll them up like they're joints and with dryer lint. I've heard people stuffing them in uh, like toilet paper rolls. And then people use crowns and crush them up all different ways. So making your own fire starters is very inexpensive too. I had been told that if you take eggs and you take like a, a plastic jar, wash it out, and you take your dozen eggs or however many will fit in it, you break the eggs carefully without breaking the yolks into a jar and then fill that jar right to the brim with the eggs. Put a lid on it and you can take that camping or backpacking and unrefrigerated those eggs will last you a week that way. Okay, that's what he read. We are not advising that. I have we done don't it. want. <laughs> I've done it. I don't want someone to get in salmonella and then I've, coming back I've, and saying, Rick and Sharon said it was good. I've actually taken eggs backpacking already. Okay, but did they last a week? Well, we weren't out a full week, but they lasted okay. until I got back. So, whether they last a week, that's you guys you have to check that on your own. The other thing I want to try this camping trip because we will be using our outdoor shower is a soap and a sock. Just put the soap, a bar of soap in a sock. You just use the whole sock. But what if I want to wash up higher than my feet? <laughs> then it's gonna be hanging. So this way you don't have to worry about dropping the slippery slopes, soap somewhere. So why don't we get soap on a rope? I, is there really such a thing? Yeah. This is probably cheaper. Well, you can make your own, stick a nail in it or a screw with it. I'm sticking it in a sock. <laughs> Let's talk about booze, okay? I think it's easier to take the little liquor bottles. So if we save them, it's even cheaper if we buy the big liquor bottles. And then refill them? Yeah, get a little funnel. I just think it's easier because I don't like driving around with open liquor because you're not really allowed to. Well, 
we have a camper trailer. So if we keep the booze in the trailer, it's not in the vehicle you're driving in, you're legal. Yeah, but there's a couple problems with that. Number one, the, the big bottles are usually glass. The little bottles are plastic. So I like the little bottles all mm, around. Yeah. And plus, if they're little bottles, you can't really drink too much. See, yeah, that's what you're trying to do. Yeah. Keep me weaned. Yes. <laughs> all right, another one I've read about is Gorilla Putty, which is this putty that you just can roll up. It's sticky, and it'll keep anything like on... See people have like a little vase or something that's on their table because you know everything flies around in the camper when we're moving. But I do like the charcoal bricks in an egg carton. So we're going to crack all the eggs open, put them in a jar so they don't break, and then we've got an empty egg carton and we're going to put a charcoal brick in each one and close the lid. Now that is another fire starter, which I think is an excellent idea. Oh, okay, actually. Yeah, so. This is one of our favorite product hacks that we use all the time. In fact, we just did a video on how to save money on propane. I'll put a link to that up here. But uh, this propane distribution post comes in three outlet and five outlet, and you can hook three or five things up, and it really saves you money on propane. We love that product, and I'm going to put a link to that in the description below. This is another propane hack that we use. We have an adapter. Rather than buying the small containers of propane, which are very pricey, we refill them a couple times before we buy new ones. I just love this idea, empty Tic Tac containers for spices. I want to try this one out. Another cool hack is to get a bounce dryer sheet and put it in your laundry bag and it won't smell so bad. Who doesn't love duct tape, right? Well, instead of bringing a whole roll, just tape some of it, take some off, and tape it to a lighter, a bottle, and then you'll have your duct tape, and you'll be surprised, probably, that you'll probably use it because it's so convenient. The shoe holder. So, we have the shoe holder in two places, and it works great. The one you, you cut it down, right? Yeah, it was too long to go on the back door, so I figured I'll use a piece of it in the, one of the base cabins inside the trailer. Mm -hmm. but, but it's great for a catch-all. We should have little labels on what's in there because sometimes I have to dig in the pocket and I don't know what's in there. Yeah. Speaking of catch-alls, we try to use as much wall space as we can for little baskets and catch-alls. We've got the little baskets on the side that uh, we picked up in one of the home decor stores. They just screw on the wall, but these are for our odds and ends. I'll talk about this because I know you probably think it's stealing, but I don't see it as stealing. So when we go to a convenience store and buy a hoagie or a hot dog or a fast food restaurant and we grab those condiment packets, whether it's mayo or relish or ketchup, I always grab too many and I bring them home and I have a stack of those. So they are perfect to take for camping. Boy, that's a topic that you could probably debate forever. Well, it's uh, not open for debate. Well, it is, depending on what your point of view on it is. My point of view is... I mean, you, you wouldn't <laughs> go in there and, like, fill all of your pockets with condiments because you bought a hoagie. No, I'm okay. saying I may have two extra packs of mayo that I didn't use. All right. All right. Well, and... And this, I'm not grabbing gobs. The thing of it is, in my opinion, if you bought what you thought you were going to use and then you, but to go in and take six or eight packs of mustard because you're going on a camping trip, to me that's, that's constitutes stealing. I don't care. The Boy Scout. All right, here's another one of our favorite hacks that I kind of forgot about. So this is a kitchen cart and we used to camp this way. Now, I'm not going to take credit for this. Rick can't even take credit for this. Uh, Rick is a widow, but his uh, previous wife made came up with this idea uh, in a tool chest, and it was a rolling cart for when they went camping. And we used it, too, when we went tent camping. Since we have a camper now, we don't use it as much, but we're going boondocking for a week, so we just brought it out. But it's a great idea to keep all your pans and cooking stuff in there. Uh, it's like a rolling kitchen cart. Brilliant idea. When we get ready to go, this will be full with all our kitchen gear. 
This is a must-have as far as I'm concerned. This is a magnetic screen for bugs, and it just magnetically closes, so it's perfect. Easy to put up, too. I don't know if you can see this, but Rick put these little hooks up here. And what he did, they, that is where he hooks a tarp up to, to use for an awning. Yeah, I think he put them in the back here, too. So we have a tarp that we can use with painter's poles as an awning. We can put it off to the side or off to the back because... I guess he used grommets and put grommets in the tarp. Or it came with that, I don't know. And then he put these clamps up here. And then painter's poles and it goes up. So that's it for our hacks, guys. Hopefully you can implement some of them. Uh, look in the description below for more details to these products or links to the videos on how we put these things together. Also, I'll be putting together an article, a blog article on this to go in our blog. So yes, aside from YouTube, we also have a blog. It's called CNagersNow.com. We focus a lot on our travel as well as other issues related to seniors, whether it be health and wellness, uh, outdoor activities, technology, things like that. So if you haven't already, check out our blog. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you like our video.